Well, this is totally not dancing, and you're listening to the Shred Shack. Greetings, folks. I'm Dan Mack. And this is Chris Mack. Welcoming you to episode 100. One fucking hundred. Triple digits, triple, motherfucker. Triple digits, although I always did triple digits. I always did the zero and, and then the number. Just because I knew that one day we would, we would make it to 100. After three years. After three years. Episode 100 of the Shred Shack Podcast, your premier source of news and uninformed yet heavily biased opinions pertaining to all things heavy metal, airing bi-weekly on iTunes, Mixcloud, and Google Play, as well as on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Shred Shack and youtube.com slash Adamant's Templum. Now let's get started with some old business, and it's amazing my... In, like... <laughs> like it just it's just ready for for failure <laughs> my my app for sounds just shut down and went nope <laughs> thank god this was supposed to be our clip episode <laughs> <laughs> so i got it back up old business is old business and new business is new business uh, occasionally it, it does that like during during the show and i can get it set back up but not right when i have to press a button <laughs> <laughs> Never done that. Well, fortunately enough, we don't have any old business. Yeah, so let's just go on to some new business. And this is new business, and we do not discuss new business until next quarter. It's amazing, actually. We, um, and I, I know I'm still talking less during this, but I'm going to be coming up with random shit because it's holiday season. Um, we watched The Adams Family when Mom and Dad were here. and uh, With the boys, right? Uh, yeah. Well, no. They weren't even here. Oh. No, I, I don't think they were here. I Were they here? Who knows? I don't know. I, but we watched we watched the movie, The Adams Family. Um, and it's just... It's just amazing to, to hear that part in context. And just, <laughs> and just, and just, just, just to watch that movie, because it's, it's fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I saw it at Walmart the other day. It was Adam's family, Adam's family value. It's in that middle section where it's like yeah, five bucks. Yeah, I was just there. I almost bought it, but I was like, "Do I? Ha- I don't remember if I had these movies or not. <laughs> I can't well, remember." Did you go home and find out if you did or not? I did not. Well, next time you. I know. I, I have to. Yeah, you, just, go, when you, I go you home. definitely, you definitely need those both. Uh, both movies are actually not like the second movie is not really bad. So. I don't think I've ever really watched the whole second movie anyway. Yeah, it's it's not bad. But I do love the original Adam's yeah, Family, of ab- course. Absolutely. So I don't think you, I'm not even sure if you can buy the the original movie on by its itself. Own. Yeah, like, I think, that's I think fine. You, I think I you have to that. get it with with Adam's Family Values. I can totally deal with that because no one else is going to buy Adam's Family Values by itself. <laughs> is that why they have to sell it as a pair? Probably. <laughs> uh, I I think there's even more movies. Obviously, after Raul Julia died. Uh, I think they made a few more. I, I don't. I think that sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah. Anyway. Probably straight to video type things. Anyway, new business. Talking about new album releases. Um, now I have been listening to some new stuff um, in preparation for the fact that we are getting back to doing um, top three videos like normal, um, and. I, I I just I just gotta say that nothing grabbed me. It was it was just. Let him go. You'll stay here with me. We'll go bowling. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it was there was nothing that that really it was just it, it was it, oh it took forever to play. Wow. Yeah. It it it, it, it nothing grabbed me. Um, there's only one album I haven't listened to uh, the, this week, um, and I have a feeling that it's gonna be like, like stoner fuzz rock, and which is fine, but like nothing, nothing, you know, grabbing by the balls and said you will listen to me. Mm. So, well, I haven't listened to any, any new albums yet, but I did just get from you uh, copies of the new Soil Work record that just came out and the new. Let's just say Ginger. Let's go with that uh, EP that just came out. So 
that will be yeah. listening for the week. That's, that's one thing we got to we got to follow up on is is the actual pronunciation of that band's name. And like the one time I looked up the the actual pronunciation of Kerbeller Talk. Yes. <laughs> K- K- well, let's say it now. Kerbeller Talk. <laughs> one of the best bits I had in a recording of a video. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it made it to our intro. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Almost as good as. My name is Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, or Beehole. Anyway. Oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing new. Although today, while I was working on the script, mm-hmm. I found out that uh, Asteroid, a band I've been jockeying since 2016, is releasing a new album on February 1st. Ooh. Yes. Um, and they have a new song out that's incredible so mm-hmm. i'm really stoked on uh, for that to be the first new album of the month next month where are you getting um where are you currently getting your list of what's coming out soon? um right now i i, I usually just google 2000 whatever mm-hmm. uh heavy metal releases and usually i get a lime wire or loud wire yeah that's that's the thing because like that's usually what i use and that's usually what I use. Like I, I copy and paste into the into the monthly top three list. But the only thing that's been coming up is the most anticipated. Yes, albums. I don't think they've. I don't think they've started the calendar yet. Yeah. So what I have now and what I pulled up is Wikipedia. And that's what I've done. And that's why that's what I've been doing. And it's and... a good thing about for Wikipedia because just like Loudwire, it's editable. Yeah, it's going to be edited throughout the year. Yeah. So what right now they only have. I have a pretty detailed list up until about March. In April, it kind of winds down and then it skips, uh, you know, until August where mm-hmm. Hammerfall is coming out. But then they also have a uh, list of artists with material in production and things that we've talked about on in our recording news. You know, we have Accept, Abath, Amana Marth, Armin Saint, etc., etc., etc. And it's a long, long, incredible list of artists that have music in production, even with some album titles that are, are ready to go even though these things are not ready for release just yet which is kind of cool yeah so but you know 2019 is looking stacked yeah as we've already talked about i mean just looking at looking at the first three months yeah i'm just looking at january right now we talked about we got soil work we got ginger but then we also have in the next couple of weeks here um evergrey's new album is coming out at the end of the month on the 25th king diamond's releasing his songs for the dead uh, at the end of this month, his li- live album, the live album, yes. Yeah. Uh, in February, we got Asteroid. I just mentioned Within Temptation was is in the first week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Overkill is at the end of the month. Rap City Fire is at the end of the month. Yeah. Candlemass is in the at the end of the month. Candlemass, who I thought stopped making albums, and but... apparently, I think I think it's Candlemass. They have a new al- a new track out right now on the internet that features. Uh, you know, the godfather of metal, Tony Iommi on guitar. Of course. So uh, in March, just looking ahead here, we got a, we got two albums from Demon Hunter coming out, a new one from In Flames, which is promising to be pretty good. Uh, Mark Morton, who is the uh, guitarist from Lamb of God, his solo album is coming out, and Queensryche. That's all the first week of March. Yeah. Then we have Children of Bodo, Misery Index, Doro's got stuff coming out in March. Megadeth has a – we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. You know – all this stuff. Did we mention Evergrey coming out of an album at the end of this month? I just mentioned it, and I, I this is the first I'm hearing about it. Okay, yeah. I yeah, think we, yeah. if anything, we talked about it maybe in December, and we, I forgot. We, we mentioned it. Okay. We, we mentioned it briefly that they were coming out with with the Atlantic. Yeah, the Atlantic. Yeah. Um, which is cool because I j- we'll talk about that in a minute. Too. Uh, which I already called for top three. <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> you did. Because because Evergrey is fucking amazing. So yeah, I mean, it's just 2019 is just looking totally stacked. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's oh that was oh that was wicked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, this is cool because in 2019 it says 2019 in heavy metal music. So you got different categories here. So bands disbanded. They are listing Slayer as a band that's being disbanded in 2019. Yeah, bands reformed. You know, this they, is, they, they always cool. they always do that. Um, it, it's just that it, it's. I, I feel like it's never. It, it's a little bit too, maybe too inclusive, which is why I never used it in the past. Uh-huh. 
Um, I always stuck with Loudwire because because of the organization of it, and I was able to copy and paste a lot True. more easily from Loudwire. And plus, also they're not just heavy metal; they're also hard rock too, so they cover a yeah. little bit more. Yeah, wire Loud, spectrum. Well, Loudwire definitely did the same thing. Yeah. So that's what I mean, Loudwire. Yeah, yeah. So some of the some of the stuff that I that Loudwire put up there, and I, I would go th- I go through the list, and I actually go through at least one song from every artist, and there were some that were like, "What the fuck? <laughs> like, like wh- what?" And I'm like, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, um, I, but I am still waiting for their list. I'm still waiting for. A comp- um, um, I want to say more comprehensive list, but I guess right now Wikipedia is that comprehensive yeah, list. Yeah, Wikipedia is, is the list at the moment. So, But now that we had that out of the way, mm-hmm. what else have you been listening to? Um, I've been listening to some albums from the artist I chose as my dealer's choice for 10 word reviews. I'm not going to divulge it until the video comes out. When are we doing that? Uh, whenever you want. Oh. So um, the sooner the better. I was going to say, I have time this yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, the sooner the better. If you want to be the first to do it, because I don't know when Pat and Reese are doing it. Pat and Reese are doing the same artist. Oh, is that right? So okay. They're doing, they're doing it together. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so whenever they do it, but it's it's content, so it I am willing to release it. As soon as possible. As as soon as it's it, it's our content, so I'm willing to release it at a regular interval as soon as possible. Um, mine is half written. I still have to listen to to a few more. I was gonna bits. say it just gives me an excuse to listen to that band like I need one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and of course we're just doing studio albums. Yes. Yes, just studio. Okay. Oh, strictly strictly studio albums. Um, there are e- EPs are allowed. Um, if EPs are allowed, if most of the EP is new material, uh, new material, um, which when we did uh, Nightwish, we excluded uh, Over the Hills and Far Away because it was a cover. Well, well, technically it was a cover, and in, and the the it was an EP. Uh huh. Uh huh. And 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 I think half of it was live tracks. Right. So I was, I was like, "There's no point in doing this," and I don't have it. I don't. I don't know anything really about it. Right. I, I, don't, just, I don't. I know need, the song. But yeah. I don't. I don't really need it. So, so that was that was my my decision. So, if anybody had any any issue with that in the Nightwish video, which, considering the fact that the Nightwish video did really well, even on my own channel, like. It got a lot of views on my channel, and I and I I stopped I stopped using my channel to post um, Shred Shack videos. Now I post the ones from the Shred Shack channel. Uh-huh. Um, but I got a lot of views on my channel, so basically, you know, no no uh, promotion of any kind, and it got a lot of thumbs up and watch and views. That's cool. So. Um, so obviously no one really had any significant complaint about that. <laughs> so, right. um, but what else, um, what else have I been listening to? Um, I can't really think of much else. Um, it's mostly been that artist just because, um, I, I picked up the last album I needed from, I, last album I needed, um, and that's it's been basically just getting an earful of you know what I've what I need what I've needed to catch up on so yeah you'll find out very soon I'd say within the next three weeks what what artist this is going to be uh, what about you mostly um, let's see if you want to find out what I've been listening to, you really just have to check my Instagram account. Yeah. Because I really do, I, I do albums of the day for the most part, or mm-hmm. I try to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got some, uh, I'm on a Marth, Yom's Viking in there, Barrows, which is an album I've been talking about for years now. It's a instrumental album. Uh, it's a concept album. 
told instrumentally is the the birth and death of a star, which is just so incredible. Uh, just the, the the musical passages are amazing. Uh, confrontational, the synthwave album I got a long time ago. Uh, I'm also on the 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 Dio campaign trail here, listening to some Rainbow uh, and Mob Rules. Yeah. Um, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, out of nowhere. Uh, Rasputina, just because I really like them. Mm. And I happen to have a had a twenty five dollar gift card from a Secret Santa at work, and I happened to be downtown uh, on Tuesday, and I went to Hogwiles for the first time in forever. Yeah, and I went to their use section to try and get the most bang for my buck there, and I picked up uh, self titled Grand Magus, uh, Arch Enemy Stigmata. Mm-hmm. Uh, I picked up Mierker's second album. Uh, I'm going to try and pronounce this. It's Meredit. Merit. It's Merit. the Danish word for nightmare. But that was really good. And last but not least, something I've been wanting to pick up for quite some time now: Recreation Day by Evergrey. Yeah, you know, actually, that's 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 one of uh, Evergrey's albums that I'm least familiar with. It, it's the one I'm most familiar with, only because of the song "Recreation Day" and "I'm Sorry." I'm well. I'm I'm familiar with. I'm sorry because of um, because I have a copy of I have a special edition copy of the Inner Circle, and at the end of the album there are three um, bonus tracks that are live acoustic, um, which are Recreation Day and I'm Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, um, but but I'm sorry is is the first of those those tracks and that's the one that I hear the most and it's a it's a beautiful song. I, I'm a I'm a just I'm actually a really big fan of Tom England's voice. Yes, like and the way it matches the music that Evergrade does, I think is just spectacular. Yeah. So, um, if anybody if, if anybody is a fan of Arion out there, watch the behind the scenes for zero one. Um, because they make fun of Tom so much. <laughs> because apparently, I guess when he does when he does songs and he messes up, he will just go into random, like. He's a fish. Uh, yeah. Well, no. That that's 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 um that's the guy from Magnum. I forgot Bob Catley. Oh, I thought it was. Oh. No, no, no. Tom England apparently when he's when he's singing a song, if he messes up, he will start to just like mumble. <laughs> so <laughs> so like, he'll be sitting there and like like sing a song like um, fucking hell. You know, if he's singing, I'm sorry. He'll be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he'll just he'll just do that, and and it's fucking hysterical to listen to, because you can you can hear laughing in the background. <laughs> Just, just, um, it's it's amazing, <laughs> and and there's even a part where they're like, we don't need a grunter on this album because they had, um, because they had what's his name on the album, um, uh, Jonas Rensky from Catatonia on there, and it's like we don't even need a grunter on this album. We've got Tom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. But that's what uh, I've been listening to. Yeah. Actually, I, I forgot to, to mention a few things. Um, I actually, I, I've been letting a stack of CDs pile up um, just because putting away CDs is an arduous task now. Um, what with having my large spinning rack, the two bread boxes, uh, another random rack, and now the library card rack. Love that thing. Yeah. So it's it's a long process, and I actually just finished it finished today. Um, but um, a when I went to go pick up uh, your Christmas gift, um, I also picked up a copy of Diamond Dogs by Di- uh, David Bowie, which is a great album. Nice. Uh, if 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 you need to know, it's the one with the Rebel Rebel on it. Ah. <laughs> so, um, but I also um, went to CD Exchange uh, because I have had because I have gift cards, and I've had a gift card just kind of with some extra cash on it, and then I got new gift cards this time around. So I was like, okay, well, might as well go spend some cash. So I went out and bought a bunch of random CDs, um, and CD Exchange always has. 
deals. Which one? Which one did you go to? It depends on it depends on the day, honestly. Because oh, I went I went to the one that's closer to here, the one off of Walsham, and I wasn't a fan. Yeah, the one the one here has a very limited CD selection. They are they are much more movie based. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to that one, and that's where I bought uh, Diamond Dogs. Um, the there's one over in Leon Valley. Um, Hebner. Yeah, on Hebner. Um, that I go to uh, because my therapist office is near there. Um, so if I have if I get there early enough and I have time to kill, it's like I'm gonna go buy some CDs. Um, and then there is uh, the one on bitters. Bitters that I haven't been to in a while, but I want to. That one. Uh, that's probably the one I'm gonna go to because I have a fifty dollar gift card from you. Yeah. To spend and I feel like they had they had the best. They well, the, the last selection. time I was there, I absolutely killed it. Yeah. And I only had like a $25 gift card. I walked out there with like five CDs. Yeah. I killed it over there. And I bought like four Coheed and Cambria records. Yeah. I've walked out of there spending a, maybe a less than $50, and I walked out with 16 CDs. Yeah. Yeah, there's so. absolutely no reason to, to, to buy new at the <laughs> when you go to there. Yeah. Like, I also have like a little bit of a – of a price standard when I go to a UCD store. Like, if it's if it's more than six ninety nine, there's definitely going to be, like, unless it's, like, an album I absolutely must have, yeah. it's probably going to stay there. Yeah. Oh, because, like, here's an example. Um, I am a huge fan of the Crash Test Dummies. I've, I've mentioned this before. Yes, yeah. Um, and I've been listening, and <clears throat> that's an album that I listen to frequently, uh, Songs of the Unforgiven. Um, I've mentioned it uh, on here on the podcast. I said, we, we had a lengthy discussion about that just, yeah. just recently. But there's an album that they released in 2001 that is now out of print, and if you go online, like to Amazon, it's you know it's like 40 bucks. I found it for 7.99, so I was like, okay, I'm going to spend that money. Like I that's that is something that I'm willing. If I can't get it cheaper somewhere else, which I I'm I'm not gonna really sit there and go crazy searching for it. It's right here in front of me. I'll I'll spend the money. Yeah. So, and it, you know, it gives you it give, if if you don't know CD Exchange, they give you if you spend over five five ninety nine, which I thought was originally seven ninety nine. I guess they lowered it a little bit. It's now five ninety nine. If you spend over five ninety nine, you get like a little token thing. You get ten tokens. You can get a free CD. Yep. So, and then they also have deals like uh, if you buy so many CDs at this price, you get like a third, a, a, another one for free or something like that. Yeah, yeah. They have, they have all sorts yeah, of crazy they, deals, which, yeah. are, is, which is really cool. And and so it's one of those situations where it's like I I see this CD and I I know that it's going to be hard for me to find elsewhere, so get it now. So that's what I did. So. Um, and, and I did listen to that album, and it's fucking good, too. So, <laughs> so hooray for me. Win, win, motherfuckers. All, all sorts of win, win. Uh, so let's go on to general news, then. Do you have a clip for general news? I don't, but I was my my I thought my tablet died for a second, but I, it's, it's back, and there we go. Here, all right. here, here's a clip. Could the virus kill the Grimace? Nothing can kill the grimace. There you go. That is definitely general news. <laughs> that is general news. All right, here we go. Greg, uh, Pacidio? I don't know. Dan. I think it's like Puciato. Puciato? Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. The singer and songwriter from the Dillinger Escape Plan and the Black Queen will release his first book, Separate the Dawn, which is going to be a collection of poetry and photography Largely, largely written and taken during the Dillinger Escape Plan's final year and a half uh, of existence, and the book is coming out on February twelfth via Federal Prisoner. I guess that's a publishing mm. place or label. Is the second release for the label slash publishing house following the Black Queen's two thousand eighteen album Infinite Games. So that could be interesting. This one's more interesting though. Mm. Lamb of God frontman Randy Blythe. Animals as Leaders guitarist Javier Reyes, Sworn Enemy guitarist Lorenzo Antonuccio? Antonuccio. Antonuccio, yeah. Okay, wow. Uh, 33 and West Booking Agency co-founder J.J. Kassiri 
and Media Scare Records head honcho Baron Bonar have joined forces in a new band called Over It All. So that could be interesting. Yeah, it's, just, it's another band for, for Randy to be in to eventually get arrested for something that he didn't do. <laughs> Well, I, I just find it the very contrasting styles of Sworn Enemy, Animals as Leaders, and Lamb of God coming together to form a, a band. Yeah. Well, the Animals as Leaders thing is 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 the big for me. That's 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 the big, you know. Well, like, I think Har- Javier is. I don't like. I don't know the dynamic of Animals as Leaders. Uh, but when you talk about Animals as Leaders, you're usually talking about Tossin. He's the he's the African American gentleman. He's usually the front. He's like considered the front man of the band, even though there's no singing. Yeah, he's he's the face of that band, and I I tend to think that of him as the songwriter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Javier might just be, you know, the rhythm guitarist, kind yeah. of filling in for the ride, uh, going for, along for the ride kind of thing. I don't know, um, so I don't know what his writing style is like. Yeah, I know what he does in Animals as Leaders, but I don't know what he does on his own. Mm-hmm. So it could be very interesting to see if he if he has a different style than that of what he does in Animals as Leaders, or if it's going to be incorporated into this new yeah. band with Randy Blythe being more of a groove metal guy and Sword Enemy being more of a hardcore band. Yeah. So it, that should prove very interesting overall. It's kind of... It, it, you were mentioning with the guitar players and their different uh, styles and everything. Man, this app doesn't want to stay open today. They, the, the, the day we were supposed to be doing a whole crap ton of clips, my app... my. The app won't stay open. Wow. We just might have to save the clip episode for episode 101. Yeah. <laughs> There's something on your face. <laughs> it was pain. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, but I was I was thinking of the same thing with um, around the time that the new CKY album came out. Um, because you have two guitar players in that band. I was wondering who is the one that writes it because they have a very unique style. And I, th- I thought Darren was the one who did most of the writing. I, I wasn't... That's, that's what I thought, too, originally, but there is a lot of stuff on the new album that is very much that guitar style, that CK... That, that, that traditional, trademark CKY guitar style. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if how much of it is is one or the other, or if they... He just, you know, happens to... It happens to be able to write in that style as well, and, and is doing that for for the sake of fans and everything. To kind of just keep the style of the band itself. Yeah, exactly. A little bit of consistency. Yeah, exactly. So I'm wondering how much of 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 the Animals as Leaders influence is going to go into this new band. Here. Right. So. And obviously, because the other two members of the band are are record label founders or or whatever. We're not necessarily familiar with anything that they've done musically either. Yeah. So there's there's no telling what this band's going to sound like yeah. at all. Yeah. And Randy Blythe has been experimenting more and more with Lamb of God with a cleaner vocal sound. Mm. So who knows what he's going to do with this band? It's going to be Night Flight Orchestra. Bam. Oh. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Man. <laughs> that would be funny. Night Flight Orchestra, though, is that that's some shit. <laughs> I love that. That is some shit. All right. Next up here, James Hetfield makes his dramatic acting debut as part of the cast of the thriller Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile, which will receive its premiere at the Sundance Film Festival on January 26th. The film follows the relationship between notorious serial killer Ted Bundy, played by Zac Efron, and his longtime girlfriend, played by Lily Collins, who at the time had no knowledge of the crimes. Hetfield plays Officer Bob Hayward, a no-nonsense Utah Highway Patrol veteran who was the first law enforcement officer to arrest Bundy in 1975 after pulling the killer over and discovering burglary tools in his car, but wisely suspecting much worse. While Hatfield has played himself in other films and television productions, this is his first dramatic role taking on a different character. Surprised it's taken him this long, you know, considering the, the fame of Metallica and the downtime between albums and everything. It's... And it's, he has done, like, voice work. Mm. I mean, he, he had multiple characters on uh, Metalocalypse. Yeah. But again, that's also just, it's a comedy show. Yeah. You know, it's just his voice. This yeah. is Hetfield in costume, in character, in a movie, mm-hmm. in front of a camera. It's a completely different situation. Gotcha. And funny thing enough, though, 
is the director of this movie is the same director who did Paradise Lost and um, Some Kind of Monster. Ah. So, that, which is probably why Hetfield was brought into it. Mm. But the even better part about it is, is that Hetfield actually kind of looks like the guy that yeah. he's playing. Gotcha. So it makes a lot of sense. Gotcha. You know, and he, it, it's James Hetfield. He's six foot one and kind of an imposing figure. Mm. Zach Efron playing Ted Bundy, not exactly the most imposing figure. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a good it'll be a good contrast I think. Yeah. So Okay. Cool. All right. So speaking of biopics here, uh 20th Century Fox's Queen biopic Bohemian Rhapsody was named best drama at the 76 Golden Globe Awards and Rami Malek won best actor for his portrayal of Freddie Mercury. Ray uh Mr. Malek beat out uh Bradley Cooper in A Star Is Born. John David Washington in Black Klansman, Lucas Hedges in Boy Erased, and Willem Dafoe in At Eternity's Gate. Now, I remember last time we did this, we were discussing, like, we were, we, we were imaginary bets on which which one, if any, they would win if they were to win. Right. And they ended up winning both. They ended up winning both, and they won the Golden Globes. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily guarantee them the Oscar, though. Yeah. We've talked about it, that they were nominated... For the same categories in the Oscars, I believe. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but still, oh, that's 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 still a pretty big win there. Yeah, and going into the Oscars, I, I think <laughs> Rami Malek probably has the momentum now. Yeah, to to win it, you know, especially considering that he's portraying a beloved human being. Yeah, in a very real way, and you know, getting critical acclaim not just from critics but like fans and people who actually knew the person. So, he's got a decent amount of momentum going into it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, if you hate Freddie Mercury, then uh... I hate you. I hate you more than anything in this damn world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's no, there's no hatred of Freddie Mercury allowed here. So, <laughs> just, just throwing that out there. Wow. <laughs> I got, I got nothing. <laughs> I, 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 it's a good chance to use that clip. What can I say? I, I literally have nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just, just. Mm. Damn it! There you go. Epic. <laughs> Done. Drop. Mic drop. The end. Oh, moving on. The English language film Lords of Chaos, which is based on true events of the Norwegian black metal scene in the early 1990s, will open in theaters February 8th and on demand on February 22nd. Swedish director Jonas Ackerlund, who's worked with Metallica and Rammstein, directed the film, which is being released by Gunpowder and Sky and is co-produced by Vice Studios, 20th Century Fox, Scott Free Productions, and Insurgent Media. Let's just let's just call this what this is. This is the church burning movie. We do the weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we do the weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is the church burning movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. We um, do the weird stuff. <laughs> um I, I actually, considering it's it is a, a a a I guess a biopic. I can't really. I don't, I don't want to use a different term here because I can't think of a different term. But it is about um, man. St- yeah, it, it's about a style of music that I'm interested in. Yeah. You know, I may not I may not like everything that comes out of it, but I am interested in in what's become of. I think it scene. also like specifically follows around mayhem, and specifically around. The murder, mm. like not just the church murder, but the murder that happened, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting. And plus, I always find anything that they do that's centered around metal, I always like to see how they do it. Yeah, you know, you, like how they portray the people, like even in like even fictional characters. I, I like to see how they portray the fictional characters who like metal and stuff like that. Like, I don't know if you ever seen the movie Hesher, no, with a. Uh, uh, Gordon Love, oh, what the fuck is his name? Joseph Gordon Lovett. That guy, and Rain Wilson, uh, and it's just a really f- interesting uh, movie because mm. I think it, it centers around uh, a, a father and son who lost their wife or lost his wife, mother, whatever, and they have this guy living in their basement, and it's Gordon 
Joseph, Joseph Gordon Levitt, and he's pretty much like Cliff Burton. He looks like Cliff Burton. He listen. He plays bass. He's like, but it's just the way they portray him is just really interesting and fun. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. also the the director of the film. I, I, you know, I can't argue with because you know, worked with Metallica, worked with Ramstein. You work with Ramstein, I assume that you're gonna, you, you've got a stomach for the for the strange. <laughs> we do the we weird stuff. stuff. We do the weird stuff. <laughs> 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 That's how he introduces himself. <laughs> <laughs> he walks in. That just that just plays. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, Wow. All right. Kill Switch Engage frontman Jesse Leach says that he needs time to get help after recently informing fans that he and his wife of over 16 years, Melissa, have decided to go separate ways. Leach, who has been very open about his battles with anxiety and depression, took took to Instagram on Friday, January 11th, to let his followers know that he would be seeking treatment so that he can avoid becoming, quote, another statistic of suicide. What? That's more than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Um, I have nothing for that. So. Well, he, apparently he has been uh, dealing with this, uh, with anxiety and depression for quite some time, as they said. Mm-hmm. And he even went so far as to say that when he left the band originally back in 2002, I think it was, or yeah. something like that, after recording the first two records, uh, that a lot of it had stemmed from uh, depression and anxiety, especially with taking on the responsibilities of being a band on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's still obviously dealing with these issues and now with the you know impending separation from his wife of over 16 years i can only imagine that has compounded yeah yeah and and that's also that would also be a a wife who you 16 years yeah coincides with the time that you would have left the band yeah so that could have been you know could have been a a staple of of strength for you in in a moment of of, of weakness. And as he far just as... recently had uh, vocal cord vocal cord surgery, and she was there for that. He just recently finished the recording of the new Killswitch Engage album. She was there for that. So, yeah. a lot of stuff yeah. going on for Jesse, and it's good that he's recognizing the problems before yeah. they reach a violent or tragic end. That's always the good case when you recognize, because that's that's usually the first step, is actually recognizing the, that there's an issue yeah. of some kind. So, And given the rash of depression-related suicides that have happened, the world has seen Yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna say, we don't need to start 2019 any worse than it already has started. So Yeah, Gene Oakland. Damn. Gene Oakland, Super, Super Dave, Dave Osborne. So, yeah. You know, but uh, th- thankfully, no, those weren't suicide, but... Still. S- still. Yeah. All right. We're going to keep on moving here. Yeah. Uh, not ending on up on any de- upper here, though. Mm. Uh, Rigor Mortis and Warbeast vocalist Bruce Corbett is receiving hospice care after his esophageal cancer has spread throughout his body. This is the part where I play the South Park uh, cancer clip, but, uh, of course, my, my application is fighting. <laughs> So, um, yeah, let's just, let's just move on. Let's just move on. Let's just move on. It's, well, the good thing is, is that the next segment we have here is called the good that men do. Yeah. I was going to say, you should call the previous, you should call the previous section. Cancer's a twat. (laughs) The good that men do. All right. I never thought I'd talk about this band on this podcast, but foreigner has announced that it is donating proceeds from a new version of its hit song, I Want to Know What Love Is, to Shriners Hospital for Children. Foreigner recently recorded the song and created a new music video featuring Shriner Hospitals for Children patients. The new release is available for download on Google Play and iTunes beginning uh, this past January 1st. Fans can visit www.showthemlove.org to download or pre-order the album. Huh. I don't know why you would, wouldn't talk about Foreigner. Foreigner is awesome. <laughs> and obviously this proves the that foreigner, foreigner belt <laughs> for, this, this proves that foreigners awesome so hey the foreigner belt from double Aquatine vision Aquatine motherfucker Force. okay you know what looks like you're suffering from double vision <laughs> double vision motherfucker okay cold as ice great goddamn songs not one hit wonder just great goddamn 70s rock songs well, speaking of 70s rock here, 
Steven Tyler, and Mick Fleetwood, along with Tyler's backing group, Nashville's Loving Mary Band, will perform a benefit concert for Janie's Fund on Thursday. Oh, they performed a benefit concert for Janie's Fund on Thursday, January 3rd at Fleetwood's On Front Street in Maui, Hawaii. Janie's Fund is a philanthropic, philanthropic initiative created by Tyler in partnership with one of America's most effective nonprofits, uh, Youth Villages. Named after Aerosmith's 1989 hit, Janie's Got a Gun, which tells the story of a young girl who was abused by her father. Janie's Fund provides hope and healing for many of our country's most vulnerable girls who have survived the trauma of abuse and neglect. You know what? Honestly, I am actually now glad to know what the song is actually about. Because you didn't of... know that? No, I, I obviously... I mean, it's kind of you... clear. <laughs> No, you don't think so? No, uh, I mean, I, I, I just, I just never really thought about too much of it, but, but I'm, yeah, that's 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 pretty intense for Aerosmith. Yeah, for you know, for the party rock band the, in the 1970s, the, for the same band that wrote Lord of the Thighs, <laughs> <laughs> and but, a ten inch record. Yeah, so, um, but good on them as well. So. Mm. Yeah, it's, I think uh, Stephen Tyler's been involved with that for a long time. Well, yeah, it's, it's well, it's, yeah. Yeah. All right. So the next bit here would be alcoholica, but no one has released a new whiskey or beer or wine this week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we well, actually well, devoted an the, entire the, section the, to it, somebody releasing an alcohol. Oh, well, think it's the last time we did. There was three instances of this but the other thing about it is is that i recently found out that you know new beers have to go through an approval process that involves the government and the government is shut down right now ah yes so therefore nothing new is happening oh wait i can hear it Wow! <laughs> wow! Uh, just, just wow! I'm sorry. I thought uh, I, 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 I was distracted for a second. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So no alcoholica today. Okay. So we will go on to recording news, and as we've already talked about, excuse me, 2019 is looking stacked, and we will continue talking about more of that right now. First off here, though, is Megadeth will release a Greatest Hits album, Warheads on Warheads on Foreheads. That's the, I, I can't tell if that's a good name or not. Well, the album cover is phenomenal. Anyway, that's going to be released on March 22nd. The disc will feature 35 remastered tracks hand-selected by Mr. Mustaine. Hand-selected. Hand-selected. You can just see him in the studio just sitting there. <laughs> Just look at all that I've done. <laughs> wow. Just, yes. Sideshow Bob, you're the man. All right. We mentioned the new band uh, Over It All, which is Randy Brythe and the gentleman from Animal Disease Leaders. But according to their Instagram bio, the band's debut album will be released later in the year via Sumerian Records. Okay, cool. All right, Michael, Michael Shanker Fest's sophomore album is scheduled to be released in August via Nuclear Blast Records. I can't just call it the Michael Shanker Band or anything? Well, I think he's already had that because the, there was the Michael Shanker Group, Michael, Sh- Michael Shanker something else, and this is Michael Shanker Fest. As, this is getting Devin Townsend territory. <laughs> Devin Townsend Group, Devin Townsend Project, project. Devin, Devin Townsend, Townsend Band, Devin, Devin Townsend, Townsend is the shit. <laughs> Don't fuck with Devin Townsend. <laughs> Devin Townsend outdoes Devin Townsend. There is no out Dave growing Dave grow. <laughs> Devin Townsend meets Devin Townsend. I think they, that there they was, see me growling. There were, I mean, if he had a if, if he had a, 
um, if he were older and or, or had passed on, he had a son, and it, it would be like 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 Dweezil Zappa doing uh, Frank Zappa's music. Zappa does Zappa. Zappa, to Zappa. <laughs> Townsend does Townsend. Townsend does Townsend. Well, we could do that though, because Devin Townsend could totally do Pete Townsend. But that's a different. But thing. that doesn't work. Speaking oh. of which, I recently saw that the Who is going to release a new album and tour. And I'd rather get kicked in the dick a thousand more times. <laughs> and apparently, they're touring with the Symphony. I, you, know, you know what I've realized in in, in as I've gotten older. Uh, I've 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 become to hate more things, and, <laughs> and and the Who is actually one of the things that I've I've grown to hate. I like the Who. I just don't I, like I just don't like the fact that they're still trying. I don't like I don't I like Rain or Me. That's about it. I like Tommy. I like Who's Next. It's just like I I, mm, I can't get into it. All right, ready for some hashtag copy and paste here? Sure. All right. On March 8th, Farosi, we're going to go with that, Farosi folk metal band Tear will release its eighth full-length Hell via Metal Blade Records. Hell is a collection of ruthlessly melodic and irresistibly compelling progressive folk metal that will immediately resonate with anyone who have followed the group at any point over the two decades of its storied career. Chop that cock! Thank you, blabbermouth.net. Wait, wait, what? Chop that cock! Yeah, yeah buddy. Sounds about right. <laughs> just, 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 just... Increase me up, woman! <laughs> <laughs> just, just... I don't... I, I, uh, <laughs> speaking of the things about... Speaking of the things that I hate, <laughs> Tear is not among the... Is among them. <clears throat> um, I've seen them live, and I'm like, I just don't like this band. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't get it. Like, I know Pat loves them, but it's like, you know, just, just you know. I think, I think Pat probably has more affinity for the genre than the actual band. Maybe I, he, he does. No, he likes the band. Does he? Okay. Yeah, he does like the band, but it's just, I, I, I can't get into it. I, 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 I don't get it. Yeah, I, I think that's a particular genre that I pick and choose the artists. Like, I love me some Elvady. Mm. Like, that's some yeah, good they're, shit. Yeah, they're, they're great. That's some great shit. But, you know, I try to listen to other ones, and I'm just like, eh. Yeah, you're, you're just like, like, fuck you! I don't go that far. I'm just like, <laughs> I just get a little a little meh, you know? <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> meh. Okay, then fine, we'll go with this. We laugh at you behind your back. How do you feel about that? Yes, <laughs> that's more appropriate. Okay. Loving the clip selection, though. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, here we go. Legendary drummer, Carmine Apice. Yeah. Or PC, however Who, you want to pronounce it. Whose drum heads I still have. I'm sure you, yeah. He is scheduled to re-release his Guitar Zeus Project, a compilation album featuring a who's who list of the best and world-renowned guitarists on the planet, backed by his core band featuring Tony Franklin from The Firm and Blue Murder on bass, Kelly Keeling of TSO and MSG, which is the Michael Shanker group, <laughs> on vocals, keys, and rhythm guitar, and a piece and apathy on drums. Originally released as two separate albums in 1995 and 1997, the new remastered album by Stephen the Act. Act- Acutus. 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 Okay. Anyway, he's who's produced uh, Vanilla Fudge, Corey Glover, Overkill, and Sidney Lauper. Combines both releases as one complete version on January 18th for the first time ever across all digital platforms, as well as feature five brand new songs with Ron Bumblefoot, Thal, Pat Travers, John Norum, and top Japanese guitarists Ra Z and Char. All right, select songs will also be available on a special limited edition vinyl and CD. All right, here are some of the people on this uh, little showcase here. Okay. Brian May. Yeah. Slash. Okay. Neil Shorn. Okay. Ingve Malmsteen. Okay. Bruce Kulick. Uh-huh. Ron Bumblefoot Thal. Mm-hmm. Paul Gilbert. Mm-hmm. Mick Mars. Okay. Richie Sambora. Okay. Zach Wild. Uh-huh. Bob Baisley. Yeah. Tweezel Zappa. Vivian Campbell. Uh-huh. Leslie West, Warren D. Martini, Steve Morse, Ty Tabor of King's X, Ted Nugent, Doug Pinnock, John Norum, and others. Now, just you look at those names and tell me you're not pregnant now. <laughs> <laughs> 
That was not the clip I expected. I was expecting and get your degree, but <laughs> that was phenomenal. <laughs> like you were waiting for that. You like you had that clip ready for like the next time we do a festival was, lineup, weren't you? I was sitting there getting, getting clips ready, and I was like, "Wait a second, I have that clip. That's perfect. That's brilliant." Oh, oh. Well, damn! Like, the, man, how long were we holding on to that one for? Because that that would have been like one of the ones that we did like two weeks ago for our festival cl- uh, lists. Shit. All right. Anyway, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Amon and Marth have completed work on their new album at Sphere Studios in North Hollywood, California, with producer Jay Rustin, who has previously worked with Anthrax, Steel Panther, Uriah Heap, and Stone Sour. The as-yet-untitled disc is tentatively due this spring via Metal Blade Records. As such? You legally forfeit your right to cry, eat tofu, or watch movies where people kiss in the rain and shit! <laughs> Oh my god, you are on fucking fire with those today. Alright, here's one for you, Dan. Maynard James Keenan says he has completed recording his vocals for Tool's long-awaited new album. You're in the torch zone, baby! If you aren't made of gasoline, metal, or bacon, get the fuck out! <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, that, that, that's all well and good for Tool fans. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure they're, they're creaming themselves. It's like, good for you. Good for you. But uh, me, me. And I'd rather get kicked in the dick <laughs> a thousand more times. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. No. All right, here we go. Allison Chains guitarist and singer Jerry Cantrell's 2002 solo effort, Degradation Trips Volumes 1 and 2, will be issued on vinyl for the first time ever next month. The 4LP set will be pressed on yellow, red, and black 180-gram vinyl and is limited to 2,000 individually numbered copies. A February 15th arrival in North America is expected. Oh my god, that was badass! (laughs) I love that album, so um, a vinyl version of it is not a bad thing at all. No. Yeah. Demons and Wizards is tentatively planning to release his long-awaited third album in January 2000. I don't have time for to get a clip ready for that, but um, yeah, uh, boner. Um, a year from now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a year-long boner. <laughs> Worst case of blue balls ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean. We need something new, something exciting, something that gives me a boner and then makes me think about why I've got that boner. Any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> Any, John? Any? Hansi, you got anything? <laughs> oh, the, dude! The, the, just, just the fact that they're they're doing the live show stuff is good enough, right? I mean, it just means that they they, they want to do it. Um, I think I don't even think Blind Guardian is in is in technically in writing mode. Um, I think they're they're redoing um Night at the Opera right now. Like re-recording it? Or? Yeah, I think they're revisiting it and they're re-recording it because I know that there was a video recently where uh, Thelman Stouch, uh, who I thought was out of the band, uh, was was in an interview with the rest of the band talking about Night at the Opera re- revisited. Well, they are on the list of artists with material in production. Yeah, I, 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 th- I think it's that. I think they're just. I think they're they're just gonna re-record that. So, who you, did you think is not in the band anymore? Uh, Thelman Stouch. Oh, look at that. He is on their Wikipedia page as a former member. Yeah. Drums and percussion. Who's on drums now? Drums, percussion, flute, bagpipes. It's Frederick Emke. 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 Yeah. yeah. So, so the same drummer that they've had. So I think I think they're just like right, right now. I don't want to make it sound negative, but right now they're just spinning their wheels. Yeah. And Ice Earth just finished their album. They're, they're they're completing a tour cycle. Yep. This is this is the time for them to both go. Let's do this. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, just boner. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right. Continuing on. Yes. Sabaton have entered the studio to begin recording their new album. The follow-up to 2016's The Last Stand will be released in 2019 via Nuclear Blast Records. What's that, Pat? Yes, 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 yes! I can win! I feel great! I can do this! Ugh. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. And the fact of the matter is that I actually visually saw Pat doing that. <laughs> Th- that, that, yeah, just sitting there, you know, he's at the gym. He's like, uh, uh. no, I just saw him sitting at his desk, <laughs> <laughs> sitting at his desk, looking at the computer. All right, Blaze Bailey will release the live in France live album and DVD on March first. The set will contain a recording of Blaze Bailey's May twenty fifth, two thousand eighteen, and May twenty sixth, two thousand eighteen concerts at Chez Paulette near Nancy, France. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. <laughs> it, it's one of those things where he, he releases a lot of a lot of live stuff. Um, it's kind of it's kind of hit that maiden territory where it's like album, album, yeah. live album, album, Al- live although, album. Although, although, but he's not doing like like the way a maiden does it, where it's like new new album, new uh, live album of new material. Yeah. Then it's a live album of old material. Yeah. You know? But but also he he just did three years in a row of releasing brand new material, so I can't give him grief for True. it. True. Uh, but he does have it feels like he does have a lot of live material out there. So okay, with the early half of their discography re released on vinyl this past November, Mashuga are now planning to issue the latter half of their catalog on wax. New reissues of Nothing, I, Cash Thirty Three, Obzin, and Kolos have been slated for March 22nd with all of them remastered for vinyl by Thomas or, or Thomas Eberger Eberger yeah. yeah whom they worked with on The Violent Sleep of Reason various limited edition pressing options for each release have been announced with details and pre-orders for them all available via Nuclear Blast that's cool I'm not that big a fan of Meshuggah personally so I, I love them they're so, a lot of fun so you know I think they might fall into that uh, area where a lot of their music sounds the same. Mm. You know, it's very percussive it's and math and, metal. And math metal. Uh, they're they're considered the originators of the of the genre gent. Yeah. Um, but I think they're great. Like not, like, I, I'm not the vinyl guy of the group yeah. here. Yeah. That's that's more Pete's territory. Yeah. Uh, so he might be excited for that. Uh, I don't know if he, if he even know if he's a fan of theirs or not. Not, so. I'm, I'm not sure either. So. But the thing is, he also just seems to be a fan of vinyls in general, especially if they have different colors and stuff like that. He he tends to get excited for that. Sort I mean, of that stuff. is that is cool stuff. Like, like I've it, seen some of the things, like some, not in person, but like pictures of some of the like the colors splattered vinyl stuff that they do. It's pretty awesome. I have a I have a picture disc of an of an Ozzy album um, from from way back when, um, Bark at the Moon era, I believe. So. Like, it's just cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, costs an arm and a leg. <laughs> well, we already talked a bit about this one, but um, Astronoid, this is the sophomore album from Astronoid, it's their self titled, will come out on February 1st via Blood Music. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm mean, excited. You're I'm excited. totally, I'm totally pumped for that. I mean, that, that, that you, you already mentioned that, that you're all sorts of, you know, pumped and whatnot. Damn you, stupid app. I hate this app. Oh, my God. What's wrong? Mm, just... You're dead! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to punch your face. In the face. <laughs> no! All right. Here we go. We are up to concert news now. Okay. So All right. We're going to start off with festivals. There's only one bit of news here. Woodstock, 1969's co-producer and co-founder Michael Lang announced the return of the legendary Woodstock Music and Arts Fair for its official 50th anniversary celebration. Didn't that fail last time? Woodstock 1969 was billed as three days of peace and music, and 50 years later, Woodstock 50 will give generations of fans the opportunity to join together in the festival's foundational intent of harmony and compassion. The three-day event will take place from Friday, August 16th through Sunday, August 18th in Watkins Glen, located in upstate New York. Lang has put together a world-class team of curation and on-site festival production. Woodstock 50 will be the only authorized commemoration of the iconic 1969 festival and will feature an amazing lineup. This event is not to be confused with the Bethel Woods Center for the Arts' own tribute concert, which is happening the same weekend, the 16th through the 18th in upstate New York. That event will be held at Bethel Woods Center for the Arts, 15,000-seat amphitheater built on the site of the original Woodstock. Wow, that's... 
That's, that's funny. Some, that's some dick waving well, there. That is just some... Oh, careful, honey. He has a knife. <laughs> no, 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 I don't. I mean, that is just... That is just dick waving. Like, both of all. Like, ah, Like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, but, like... But, again... Didn't we fuck it up last time? Yeah. Aren't we going to fuck it up again? The, the the world is worse off now than it was in 1999. It's going to... It, something's going to go wrong. In both of them. You know what's funny, though, is that I guarantee that this is probably going to be something that's ridiculously overpriced and more along the lines of, like, a Bonnaroo than a fucking... than, like, the Woodstock 99 debacle. Guess what? You know what? You know what? Or Coachella. Just, just... You see, that's a professional. You didn't even see what I just did, did you, honey? No. No, just, just no. Well, that, I'm sorry, but that's the only bit of festival news I have for you today. Okay, well... well... Fuck you, festival. <laughs> he doesn't even have a clip for that. Fuck. All right, touring news. Touring news. Touring news. Symphony X will embark on a European... All right, stop. We're going home. <laughs> I am home. We are home. <laughs> a European tour in May. The world will see the five-piece hit 11 countries in one month. With the trek kicking off on May 7th in Lyon, France, culminating in... Gelser kicking. <laughs> <laughs> Gelsen Kirken. Gelsen Kirken, Germany at the Hard Rock Festival. <laughs> Rock Hard Festival. I'm even dyslexic. Goodness. <laughs> Gurky, burky, burky. <laughs> you <laughs> sound like the Polish chef. You were, you were, you were, chef, you were chef. Swedish chefing the hell out of this one. <laughs> I, need, I needed some sound clips of that. Yeah, we do. <laughs> You, yeah. might, you know what? Every time I come up with something like that, you should just press that button. That, that's what it means. That's what I said. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> All right, Tim Ripper Owens. Fired from Judas Priest, Ice to Earth, and Dio's Society. No, he wasn't fired from them. <laughs> anyway, Harry the Tyrant Conklin, who's been in Jack Panzer, Satan's Host, and Titan Force, and Sean the Hell Destroyer Peck of Cage, Jenner, and Sherman, Death Dealer, blah, 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 blah. They are now the three... Tr- uh, the three tremors. Yeah, they will launch their first ever U.S. tour in support of their self-titled debut, kicking off on February 14th at El Corazon in Seattle and wrapping up on March 11th at the Craft House Stage and Grill in Pittsburgh. I would like to see that. That would be just be interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, so just seeing having having seen Tim River Owens live and and how how it was just kind of an intimate thing. The acoustic show that we saw, yeah, yeah, and 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 seeing that as a as a that's a new group that would that would have been cool. I would have been more excited to see the previous group that they did, which was the um, it was Ripper with Jeff, Jeff Tate, Tate and, and, uh, and, and Blaze Bailey. Blaze, yeah, I would have loved to have seen that. I would have died to have seen that. I would have just, I would just. Mm. Oh no! All of this Jesus. And they were just called simply called the X members. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, ha- have you ever seen the CKY videos? I've seen some of them. Okay, there's a bit in there where one of the characters is faking it, obviously, and talking about how much they love Ricky Martin. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He's like, I die for Ricky Martin. I don't I, see you dying. I don't see you dying. <laughs> just jumped jumped. Out the car. <laughs> I don't see you dying. <laughs> and I would jump out the car and be like. <laughs> Oh my god, this is turning out to be an amazing episode. Alright, Def Leppard have announced a Canadian summer tour. Why would you do this? <laughs> the, the trek will kick off in Halifax on July 12th and end in Calgary on July 31st. Sacramento metal, uh, melodic hard rock quintet Tesla will join Def Leppard on tour. Oh. oh, it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. High on Fire has been forced to cancel its previously announced U.S. tour with Toke and Year of the Cobra due to another medical emergency suffered by the band's frontman, Matt Pike. The trek was scheduled to kick off on January 10th in Atlanta, Georgia, and wrap up on February 1st in New Orleans. This and his, does not help. His, his uh, medical issue is he's uh, suffering from diabetes significantly, and the last dates they had to cancel is because they had part of his foot was amputated he's in danger of losing the entire thing now so he has to get his diabetes under control can you can you space these out a little bit <laughs> hey listen 
I copy and paste as they come up, okay? Can you space... <laughs> first come, first serve. Altitudes and Attitude, the collaboration between Anthrax's Frank Bellow and Megadeth's Dave Ellison, two virtuosic, virtuosic, whatever, bass players who've anchored some of the fiercest thrash records of all time, has confirmed a handful of appearances ahead of the release of its debut album, Get It Out, including an inaugural U.S. show on Saturday, January 19th at St. Vitus in Brooklyn. Additional New York City appearances include an up-close question-and-answer session and performance on January 17th as part of the Guitar World Backstory series at the Cutting Room, and oh, which is an in-store signing January 18th at a Rough Trade. Los Angeles events include a question-and-answer session on January 22nd with Loudwire at the Musician Institute and appearances at NAMM on January 25th before the band heads to Europe in February. I like that Dave Ellison does a lot of that stuff. Right? Like he, he just came around here recently yeah. for, for, for an evening with. Um, but... Seriously, the way that we set up these, these are... <laughs> I was trying to, to kind of dance around that, <laughs> but yeah, no, the, no, the, you the bring way, it back. The way we the way we do these articles, it's it's, it's like again, it's like, first come, first serve. Here, like like here is a cake. For every bite that you take, I will tell you one ingredient in that cake, and it can be made of anything, <laughs> <laughs> including fingernails and, and <laughs> feces. <laughs> Here's some sawdust. Okay, flour. Then, see, then, uh, see, it was a good one. There's flour. Oh, here's eggs, <laughs> but they're the eggs of a reptile. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's how that's how you 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 do this to me. <laughs> it's called a roller coaster of emotions. Okay, I hate it. <laughs> All right, you're in a glass case of emotions, and you're drinking milk in the hot weather. You're Anchorman. Uh, it, you're Ron it, Burgundy. It, it, it's uh, what a gentle way to say money shot to the face. <laughs> You just, just, man, you're just <laughs> mean. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. We're on to one-offs now. Okay, one-offs. Mike Patton has announced his participation in the upcoming benefit concert in memory of Chris Cornell. Billed as I Am the Highway, a tribute to Chris Cornell, the event will take place at the Forum in Los Angeles on January 16th. Hosted by Jimmy Kimmel, the, fe- the show will feature performances from Foo Fighters and Metallica as well as appearances from Cornell's former bandmates in Soundgarden, Audio Slave, Temple of the Dog, and more. Proceeds from the show will benefit the Chris and Vicky Cornell Foundation, as well as, that is a word, uh, Epidermolysis. <laughs> anyway, it's a medical research foundation. Mm-hmm. Now, on a side note here, I didn't put this in because I, I saw the article after I did the, the script. Mike Patton was scheduled to sing the national anthem at the Cowboys Rams game last night, uh-huh. but he had to cancel due to sickness. I was going to I was going to mention that actually, um, just because today is is pretty much a lot of folks either you know kind of dragging their feet about the Cowboys losing or dancing around because the Cowboys lost <laughs> because, because the Cowboys lost and. <clears throat> Um, I, I don't care, and if anybody wants to uh, argue, um, we're better than you, and we know it. <laughs> come at me. <laughs> your team, I don't know what your team is, but your team sucks. <laughs> What's the worst team in the league right now? Oh, Tell- I don't remember. Whoever usually has a one more in draft pick is usually the worst in the league. That's so. my team. It always is your team. My team. Worst, always. Worst team in the league is always my team. <laughs> Dan's been a Browns fan for years. <laughs> it was the Browns and the Bengals. And <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who's doing the worst, my team. My team. <laughs> Dan is the exact opposite of a front runner. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, meanwhile, all the people who hate the Cowboys are sitting there like, Does someone need a hug? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Oh, we just lost a handful of listeners. (laughs) You you only have a handful. (laughs) And we lost them. (laughs) They're just sitting there looking at me like, Put up your juice, you bald fiend! (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. The clips. This is definitely the clip episode. This is amazing. 
Everything works. It is on time. It's wow, wow. Okay, can we go? Yeah, we. Can. All right, violence. We'll reunite for a one-off concert on Saturday, April 13th at the Oakland Metro in Oakland, California. <clears throat> the band will perform its debut album, Eternal Nightmare, in its entirety at the show, along with other surprises. Uh, Violence is another band from uh, former, or now former, Machine Head guitarist uh, Phil Demel. Yeah. He just, he just... He's just rehashing all his old shit now that he left Machine Head, because he's got his Torque re- record re- being reissued. He's doing Violence now. It's, uh, he's busy. <laughs> well, you got to keep busy if you're leaving the band. Right? <laughs> All right. Last but not least here for one-offs, Greta Van Fleet will be the musical guest on January 19th episode of Saturday Night Live. Cool. I mean... And I recently found this out, but um, their name is from is taken from an old lady in Michigan, where their hometown in Michigan. Mm-hmm. So there's a woman. Her name's not Greta. It's like Gretna Van Fleet. And she's an actual person. And she does not like their music. <laughs> she's more into old standards because she's like in her 80s. So. But she does have her blessing to use her name, obviously. They're, they're a young band, right? She's probably looking at them like, Would it be wrong to punch a child? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Jesus H. Christ, this is amazing. I mean... Oh, oh, dude. Dude, where do you get these? It's fucking incredible. All over the place. Oh, dude. But, I mean, I don't really... I've already said it before. I, I did listen to Greta yeah, You were incredibly finally, underwhelmed. I, I was underwhelmed. So. But were you as underwhelmed with them as you are with the Sex Pistols? I still haven't listened to the Sex Pistols. I have the album now. I, I, I bought the one album by the Never Sex- mind the Bullocks. Never mind the Bullocks. Uh, the how here's the Sex Pistols, but like I actually said that when I came home with the album that Lindsay had like I bought the one Sex Pistols album, the one album they had, the one album that the best punk band ever released, the one album. <laughs> <laughs> you know how bitter I am about the friggin' friggin' Sex Pistols. Yeah, I like the record, but like to give them the credit that they ha- that they get is just totally it, misplaced. They're just like that man is a self centered attention hog with no regard for human decency. Yes. Get him on TV. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much how it Johnny, is. John just Johnny Rotten. <laughs> I, my favorite thing about John Lydon, I'm not going to call him Johnny Rotten. He's an old man now. <laughs> is that they were talking? I think it was VH1. They were doing the top 100. Uh, greatest hard rock metal acts of all time. They come up to the Sex Pistols and they're interviewing Henry Rollins. And he's like, I love Johnny Lydon. He looks like a little lap dog. That's why I'm sitting right here and just pet him. And it, uh, Henry Rollins. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This just seems so demeaning from him. <laughs> this is a man whose neck is thicker than his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Are you ready for... The charts. I'm not going to call it heavy metal in the charts. I'm just going to yeah, call it the charts. Call it the charts. Right. Do it. I scanned through the top 200 already. Okay. Just get a quick so, look here. There's a couple of surprises make here. Me, mostly make greatest hits. Make me sad. All right. I'm going to make you very sad. But there's a lot of re-entries here. Okay. All right. And I have a feeling it has to do with the fact that we have now finally trickled off of the Christmas wave. Okay. Yeah. We, 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 last we, time we, we're recording this on the 13th. We so. are recording this on the 13th of January. The, the, the last episode that we recorded was on the 30th of December. So oh. we still had the Christmas wave going on. Yeah. And we talked, there was like 30 albums. There was too much Tis the Season. Oh, oh, guess where that uh, guess where that, that episode title came from? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of re-entries here because I think the Christmas wave is done. The normal stuff is coming back. But there were some surprises along the way. But first off, I have to mention that a number eight is the Greatest Showman soundtrack. And I recently posted on my Facebook page that I watched the movie and the the placement of this soundtrack is very proper. It is a great movie, and a great soundtrack. It's a lot of fun. Not a heavy metal album or soundtrack whatsoever, no. but awesome nonetheless. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to be a. You don't have to sit there and be super metal all the time. You can appreciate things that are good. And, and and the fact I think my favorite thing about the whole premise of the movie is that. It takes place in the you know the turn of the century. P.T. Barnum starting off his circus. So we're talking about top hats, 
trains. There's no cars. Mm. All this stuff. But they're using a soundtrack that's very modern and contemporary. Mm. So they don't. They're not. It's not a period piece per se. Mm. You know, it's a period error like they're, they're portraying, but they're using contemporary music, contemporary dance, and it's just incredibly well done. Yeah. And Hugh Jackman is awesome. Uh, I will, I'm sure, eventually see that movie. But going forward, when we do the top 200, I want you to tell me what number one is. Okay, number one. Actually, t- tell me what the top three are. Okay, number number one is uh, 21 Savage. Mm. I am, I was. I have no idea what that is. Neither do I. Number two is at a play, a thing called a person, a boogie with the hoodie. What the fuck? Hoodie S Z N. I don't know what that means. Wow. And number three is Meek Mill Championships. Meek Mill, I've heard of, yeah. but the other two is like. And number four is Post Malone. Like I've heard of him. You know. Anyway, can we just con- continue? Well, because, because the reason the reason is I want to know how out of touch I am. Oh, <laughs> that, that's clearly. The, that's, <laughs> that, that's the reason that I want to know the top three. It's like how like like how far gone have I have I really become? Well, here, well, here, here, here we go though. Number fifteen though is the Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack. Okay. That's, All right. So we we know that we know that. Yeah, we're just we're stop, baby. Okay. <laughs> Good. All right. Not that. All right, so we're scrolling now. Okay. All right. And there were a couple of surprises that came around here. We got Queen's Greatest Hits at number 42, up from 58. Okay. All right. Still in the top 50. Now we're getting out of the top 50. We're still in the top 100. Where was that one? Oh, out of nowhere, from 83 last week up to 55, Fleetwood Mac Rumors. Out of nowhere, 55. RKO'd. Yeah. Out of nowhere. There's a, Journey's Greatest Hits, number 69. That, up from 118 last week. Again, all the Christmas stuff leaving and getting. Uh, this probably also has a lot to do with like New Year's uh, parties and stuff like that. All those old people getting together. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Don't stop believing. 2019 is going to be better. Don't stop believing. I'm just, I'm just imagining a whole lot of a lot of cut tennis balls being thrown at you because it's the only thing that they have that they can throw at you. <laughs> and number 81 is the Beatles' White Album. 81. That's weird. We're in the top 100 still. Yeah, yeah. We are you, still in the top 100. You want to keep talking about old people. Old people. Credence. Clearwater. Revival. Greatest Holy hits, shit. 94. Okay. 94. Okay. From 124 last week. The essential Michael Jackson is at number 95. Oh, Michael Jackson. I, I assume that that one's going to be on there forever, so. All right. A re entry here at number 97. The essential Billy Joel. Okay. Number 98. A re entry. Greatest Hits by Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. 102. Up from 136 last week is the Greatest Hits of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Okay. Michael Jackson's Thriller is down to 103 from 87 last week. Still, it's up there. It's not surprising. From number 82 to number 109 is Anthem of the Peaceful Army, Greta Van Fleet. Wow. You got a little bit of a nose down there. All right, so I re-entered the very best of Hall of Notes. <laughs> Hall of Notes are just sitting there going, damn it. We're blown. Shut it down. Shut it down. The time. Oh, sorry, that was wrong. 126 is Abbey Road. 128 is Beatles 1. Re-entry at 129 is the greatest hits of Red Hot Chili Peppers. Okay. At 130, up from 160 last week, is Appetite for Destruction. The, the Eagles' greatest hits, 133. Bob Seger's greatest hits, 134. Queen's greatest hits, 1, 2, and 3. The Platinum Collection is at 137 from 106. Okay. We're getting a lot of re-entries here from... 
13 Weezer's Rise soundtrack, Roddy Rich, Adele, Bruno Mars, Sam Smith. All these people are getting back on the charts from from Christmas. From Christmas. Okay. Metallica Black Album is at 144 from 165 last week. Mm-hmm. Shawn Mendes is on the charts again. Easy G or G Easy, what the fuck your name is? What the fuck? Hello, there's a Christmas album from Michael Bublé at number 148, down from three last week. <laughs> Christmas is on its way out, but it's still lingering, lingering, lingering. George Strait back on the charts at 151. The Frozen soundtrack. Back on the charts at 152. So Christmas is definitely still like... They won't let it go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Because... But I want to let I, it go. No. Hang I, I, no, I'm not hanging on anymore. I'm letting go. No. <laughs> no, hang on. No. <laughs> Pounds, motherfucker. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Never mind the actual Nirvana album. Not never mind what we're talking about. Never mind the Nirvana album. was at 154 from 175 last week. Back in Black by ACDC is at 155 from 193. More re-entries from people we don't care about. Disturbed Evolution is at 160 from 166 last week. Wow, they they dropped pretty hard. Yep. Re-entry for Leonard Skinner, Drake, Taylor Swift. The Rolling Stones re-entry. Uh, they got a Hot Rocks, 1964 to 1971 and 167. Yeah, so basically... More re-entries from Gunna, Zach Brown Band, ABBA's Greatest Hits is back on the charts. <laughs> there we go. Uh, finally, a new record by a band called Palisades. And their album is called Erase the Pain. It is debuting at 175. Probably sucks. Probably. Dark Side of the Moon. 179 from 114 last week. 179. Oh, my gosh. It's not going away. Merry Christmas by Mariah Carey is at 181 from 8. Still. It's because everyone's still listening still to there. All, all, on, all the way off of Christmas is you. <laughs> Everyone didn't get you for Christmas. But I still want it. No. A rather re-entry here for Five Finger Death Punch, A Decade of Destruction, is at 184. It's weird that... The, that's above their actual album. Yeah. That, again, that probably has more to do with the streaming thing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. All right. We got a series of re-entries here from a lot of people we don't care about. Great. Including Justin Bieber and Demi Lovato. Uh-huh. Whitney Houston. Uh-huh. You got the Mamma Mia soundtrack, the Greatest Showman Reimagined soundtrack, which is actually pop singers doing those songs from the show, from the movie. <laughs> Lady Gaga. Frank Ocean, all re-entries. Bon Jovi's Greatest Hits, re-entry at number 199. And Florida Georgia Line, re-entry at number 200. Not the best. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of that list sucked. Yeah, a lot of that oh, list, a blue dog. That was, that was, I mean. That, that's some booty time stuff right there. I mean, the only reason we looked at it. I'm only here because you promised bacon. <laughs> For real. For real. For real. All right, here we go. Are you ready for the top 25 the hard top rock one. albums? Yes, let's All right. do it. Here we go. We got a couple of re-entries here as well. Probably These three albums probably took place of TSO <laughs> on, the, on the charts here. Probably. Number 25 re-entry is 10 by Pearl Jam. <laughs> Shit. Number 24 re-entry is Mothership by Led Zeppelin. Number 23 is a re-entry by Linkin Park, Meteora. Number 22 is a self-titled Chris Cornell record. Probably that compilation, Greatest Hits thing. Yeah. Number 21 is uh, The Greatest Hits by Three Doors Down. What? Yeah. yeah what? Yeah. <laughs> the three songs they have just on repeat. Anyway, number 20 is From the Fires, Greta Van Fleet. That's the EP, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Number 19 is And Justice for None, Five Finger, Death Punch. Re-entry is Aerosmith's Greatest Hits at number 18. Number 17 is Zeppelin IV. Number 16 is All the Right Reasons by Nickelback. 15 is Greatest Hits by the Foo Fighters. 14 is Hybrid Theory, Linkin Park. Number 13 is The Story So Far, The Best of Def Leppard. Number 13. Number 12 is a re-entry, Best of Volume 1 by 
Van Halen. What? I know. What? I know. Old people. Old people. <laughs> like 2018 sucked. 2019 is going to suck too. Might as well jump. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to the puns today. <laughs> I'm not going You're to... You're welcome. I'm not going to that clip. <laughs> Fuck off. You're welcome. Fuck off. <laughs> Might as well jump. You just, you're a, you're a <laughs> monster among men. You know what? I just, I am a, I'm pulling a broad strobe of puns here. Just, <laughs> I'm just going to sit here and... Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm-mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Oh, this one also works too. A new study out of Harvard linking one in ten deaths in this country to excessive salt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me just... Oh, whew. Okay. Ooh, are we ready? I'm ready. Might as well jump into it here. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck Number off. 11. It's the greatest hits. The ultimate collection. Bon Jovi. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Number 10. A decade of destruction. Five finger death punch. <laughs> Number 9 is the new album by Palisades. Erase the pain. Number 8 is Disturbed Evolution. Mm-hmm. Number 7 is Back in Black. Number 6 is Black Album. Number five, Paint It Black. No, I'm kidding. Um, Greatest Hits 1, 2, and 3, The Platinum Collection by Queen. Number four, Appetite for Destruction, Guns N' Roses. Number three, Anthem for the Peaceful Army, Greta Van Fleet. Number two, Greatest Hits by Queen. Number one, Bohemian Rhapsody, the soundtrack by Queen. You know, uh, uh, Freddie Mercury's just sitting there right now, wherever he may be. He's just he's just like... My grandma was right all along. I am the world's most perfect man. <laughs> What in the fucking world is that? <laughs> oh my god! He's, he's just like, yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm, I, I have three albums on the charts, and I'm dead. <laughs> fucking owning it. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> fucking owning it. Yeah. So, so you do better than that. It's just cause... amazing that like Queen is getting the the like the third resurgence of their career here. Yeah. You know, because they. It was, what was it? The first one was like the Live Aid performance. They were just kind of like a little low, and then bam, Live Aid. Holy shit. Yeah. And Remember then, how Queen is, is awesome? And then Wayne's World. Wayne's World. And now this movie. Yeah. It, it, it's not like Queen needs a, a kick in the balls like every 12, 15 years, but they seem to get it. Yeah. As, as, long, as, as long as Brian May and Roger Taylor are still alive, it's going to happen. Yeah. So, you know. Which I'm not complaining about. I and John Deacon's just sitting in the back. I don't got to do shit. I'm making money. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just sitting there. Remember that song I wrote, Another One Bites the Dust? Living off of it. I'm good. <laughs> he's just sitting there in a room full of money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm all right. <laughs> uh, I don't even have a clip for that. It's, it's just... Oh, wait, hold on. I do. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. Here comes the money. That song that plays in his <laughs> making count every time someone plays another one bites the dust. That's, that's probably what happened when they, when they said, hey, we're thinking about making a biopic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, man. I mean, as far as I know, he's he's not particularly concerned about that kind of thing. He's he's very clearly. I mean, he's not the one that's going on tour with the guys. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't need it. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't care for that kind of shit. But but still, it's funny to think about. It is funny to think about, <laughs> especially because c- considering like the stuff that we see with other bands yeah. and the money train. Uh, we're talking about Kiss specifically, but then you also talk about other bands who put their name and logo on just about anything. Yeah, you know, Slayer is getting almost to the realm of Kiss. You know, it makes me wonder, like, how much control does the band actually have of their property? Yeah, you know, because well, you know, you gotta think <clears throat> is like, you know, Kiss is making these decisions themselves more than likely. Mm-hmm. Like Gene Simmons seems to be the shrewd businessman that would not allow anybody to own anything of his. Mm-hmm. Like, so everything that happens with Kiss is probably due to him and Paul. Yeah. But I'm talking about, like, some of these other bands who, you know, 
were young and stupid when they signed their contracts and they might have signed certain rights away. Mm. You know, case in point, not music related, but Carrie Fisher, when she signed up for Star Wars, she signed away her her uh, rights to her her image. So every time that she, she made the joke that every time she looks in the mirror, she owes George Lucas a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> like because Joe George Lucas owns her face <laughs> so it makes me wonder what some of these young heavy metal bands who were you know more than likely drunk when they signed their contract not probably with the best representation how much of their intellectual property do they actually own and what are they allowed to fight against with their name on it you know what Let let's segue this into a conversation since we didn't have a an idea yet for our topic of conversation what kind of things do you see other bands any band putting their name to what kind of random things it's just I, I think some of, the, some of the merchandise is kind of re- Ridiculous sometimes. Oh, what, what, what? Which ones do you find the most ridiculous? The yoga pants. I, I think that's who, just who does yoga pants? Mastodon. What? Oh yeah, Mastodon. Just... Again, I, I like. It just seems so like weird. And then of course, there's definitely ones that are definitely tongue in cheek, who like specifically do these things for controversial purposes, like the ghost dildo. There is a dildo out there. I'm pretty sure that in the shape and visage of Papa Emeritus, you know, and I'm sure that that's one of the things is like, why did you do that? Because I can. Yeah, that's and that goes with the shtick of their whole gimmick, you know, but and I I can see some of that. But even some of these, even some of like the trend of like the the, the liquor and the, the booze, it just seems doesn't seem to serve much of a purpose. Like, where, why do you need to do that when your purpose is to be a band, to make music? Mm. You know, I understand entrepreneurship, but why put the name of the band on this particular product? Like, that don't make it sell. I guess that's what it is. It most certainly is what it is. But when I think of other people who have been, who've had success without doing that, I think of Mayor James Keene. As much as you don't like his band, he is a successful he owns a successful winery called Caduceus mm. that has nothing to do with Tool. It's not Tool's wine. It's Maynard's wine. Mm. And it's and if you just go to a, a wine shop and you see this bottle of wine, it doesn't have his name on it. It doesn't have Tool's name on it. It's just a winery doing wine. You know, it's a, it's a separate thing, completely separate from his band. Mm. You know, I would appreciate that more if, like, guys, if the like the these guys did that. Like, he has a very hands-on approach. He is doing this on his own. It's not some other brewery doing it while the band oversees the process, quote unquote, mm-hmm. and then puts their name on it. You know, Maynard is actually stomping grapes. He's growing these grapes in Arizona. There's a whole documentary about this. That's why it's, your new tool album has to come. The band is too busy stomping grapes. It's, it's, it's actually just very... It, it, it seems to be refreshing in a way to watch a guy with that kind of clout and power do mm. something completely on his own from the bottom up. You know, not just put their na- the, his band's name on something and make the money off of that. He's actually going through the process. Mm. You know... And like I said, starting from the ground up, he had he had struggles growing the grapes in Arizona of all places, <clears throat> you know, trying to find the perfect blend of wines that he wanted, the perfect grapes, all this stuff to create something special. Not, again, not having somebody do the work, and then he put his name on it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where I think some of the the lines should be drawn with this, some of the merchandising stuff and some of the stuff that guys put their names on because it it seems like they're just like hey we have a product and we're gonna approach you with it can you put your name to it can we work together and that's what that's what it seems like yeah like i don't like metallica has a whiskey now there's a bunch of bands with wines or or whiskeys and they say they have these hands-on approaches like 
how hands on are we talking about here? Yeah, especially Do you for guys the... just like like we did it. We went to the 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 distillery. We tore it around and we asked questions and we we, we got some information. Is that hands on? Especially or... for somebody like just for example, James Hetfield. James Hetfield is is now sober. Yeah. What if your whiskey sucks ass? You wouldn't know because you're sober. The 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 the, the, the comparison I can make is the joke that they made in Metalocalypse where the band was peddling pentuplement gum. Mm -hmm. And the commercial that they created was so anti what they were. It was like, you know, uh, Death Clock is this, you know, big black metal band, blah, 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 tough guys, so fucking metal, brutal. And Pentuplement Gum puts in the commercial with like jet skis and tans and all this shit. This is the kind of thing I'm thinking of here. Yeah. Like band name, product buy yeah you know instead of like the band actually having input and stuff like that like how much does how how involved is the band and what do they how much of it do they own that they have control over that's that's what i that's, well that's what i want to know is like what do you think of your own product do you actually like your own product <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> like like all, all the ones who make wine and alcohol, it's like, what do you think of it? Eh. Eh. Yeah, like, like they sit there and just shrug. We're just thinking like you know, Motorhead just just issued the uh, just released a rum. Yeah, they said let, that, let yeah. me drink nothing but Jack Daniels, which is not a rum. <laughs> <laughs> You're like it's a it's a Tennessee whiskey. They, they sat there, they opened up the bottle and poured it on the ground for him and went right back out of the bottle. <laughs> what is this shit? <laughs> like, it, I don't know, like what, what the thought process is sometimes. I got like I get it. Some like you know you want to expand uh, your your horizons, I guess. But I think they should probably keep it separate. You know. His memory should live on through money. Through money. <laughs> you know, everyone makes fun of Kiss for doing all this stuff, putting their name on everything, but like how many times have you have you gone around and seen like Slayer underwear, Slayer socks, Slayer the flamethrower. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Slayer, Slayer's oh. definitely one of them. Once once they started doing the bikes thing, I was like, yeah, okay, we're getting we're getting somewhere here. You know, and I understand. You know, Metallica is the same way. There's Metallica this, and Metallica that. You know. With Metallica, it's, uh, I, it's it's more understanding for me. For someone like Slayer, who is supposed to be like anti everything, fuck society, yeah, and and they're making this all these products that's what gets me and with no sense of irony either yeah they're they're doing it on entre like actually entrepreneurial like you know they're not you know they're not just like and then, and and then a the new product the, the complaints come when like you know celebrities wear a slayer t-shirt and they don't listen to the band but the thing is now slayer does isn't necessarily a band anymore it's a yeah. brand yeah you know it's the same thing with metallica we talked about this how bands are now no longer musical entities they are franchises they're they're brands mm -hmm. which is why we had the conversation where the brand of kiss can continue without the original members and gene simmons even said in an interview that he believes that this can and will happen mm -hmm. he has said this himself the same thing i argued just a few months ago he said himself can and will more than likely happen that the brand of kiss will continue well past the original four members yeah, and and I'm willing to bet, considering the way that, that things go with our idea of nostalgia, that once they pass, they will get four new people to sit there and be a tribute and group to them. Again, and they're the, the at least because Kiss has always been based on characters, not people. Mm. You know, someone can take the visage of Star of the Starman. Someone could be the demon. Someone could be the alien and the cat. All mm. these things. Yeah. No, there's there's anybody in that band. Everyone's replaceable, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, then we have bands like Metallica, where like is based more on the people. But the thing is, the brand still exists. Yeah. Like even if it was just a Metallica tribute band, that Metallica tribute band could continue on. You know, with the Metallica, with the Metallica music, and even get the blessings of the original members to continue recording music in their style under a name similar to a Metallica name, like Max Sabbath. Yeah, or or you know, we are injustice for all the band, you know. Yeah, 
whatever, playing music, playing Metallica songs in this, and also re- writing in the style of Metallica. Yeah. And we we thought about Kiss being that band, that that first band that is a franchise that continues on past the original members. My next thought is the Almond Brothers band no longer being just the Almond Brothers band, especially since both Almonds are dead. Yeah. You know that music can continue on as the Almond Brothers band. Just the Almond Brothers band. Yeah, because it's the Trans Siberian Orchestra now originally started as a band. It is now two separate entities touring Christmas. Yeah. It is now a franchise. It is a brand. I can see this happening all over the place. Yeah. You know, it 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 just makes too much sense to not do it. And the thing is now that we're getting into the hologram thing, the Dio hologram thing, that is no longer a band. That is a franchise. It is a brand. You know, and you, I can see it happening, like all over, to the point where, like, you know, we get to the Futurama where it's just heads in glass jars. Now, who do you think would be ag- against a lot of that? Just who would be against it? Yeah, like, like, like who do you who do you see as the ones who would be like, mm, probably not the like the bands who won't do that? Yeah. You see, like bands like Lamb of God, like the newer school bands, the ones who don't have the nostalgia effect, mm. you know. But bands that have been around for thirty plus years and are still touring on the same albums that they toured on thirty years ago, can are now franchises, yeah. are now brands. Def Leppard, Poison, Kiss, Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden to a certain extent. Yeah, you know. But the thing is, that also depends on the fans themselves. Mm. Iron Maiden fans will probably never allow that to happen. Well, the, 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 the things that they have allowed have been things like like a computer game, and I, I can see that. The thing is, like we're 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 talking about like the band, the franchise, the name of the band continuing on as a brand without any original members, mm-hmm. like Kiss. Like we can get to that. Oh, point. once once Iron Maiden's done, it's it's, it's done. It's done. You know, but like, I can see bands like Kiss continuing. On. I can see. Bands like Def Leppard even continuing on replacing members. Mm. I can see Poison definitely doing that. Mm. You know, again, they're just they're still playing the same songs that they played 30 years ago. And if you get a voice that's better than the one that they're seeing right now, who sounds even comparable to what they sounded like 30 years ago, people will probably go to see it. Journey, Journey, same thing. Yeah. Brand yeah. recognition, and I can just see it continuing on from there. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. What about since it's obviously a topic, um, a big topic, a recent topic, Queen? When Roger Taylor and Brian May finally do pass away, what becomes of Queen? It, it will probably be a prominent singer mm-hmm. performing Queen because it already is that. Yeah. It already is that. It's. It's um, but it, but it's not. But they don't. They don't call themselves Queen. They call themselves Queen and yeah, Queen and or someone and Queen or Queen. Like it'll just be that person performing Queen. There you go. It'll okay. still be Queen music, Queen production. So it'll it'll be with, it'll be down to essentially especially because the only two members of the band alive or performing are the guitarist and the drummer, and they still have an entire production team and band around them that are not Queen. Do you think that with a band like Queen, once those, once the two guys, the two still performing artists pass away, that a band will come forward and say, "We are Queen. We are here to continue their legacy." I don't think they, it would reach that point okay. because again, Queen is based on people, not characters. Yeah. Where, like I said, with Kiss, they're characters. Mm-hmm. Anyone can. Put the makeup on yeah. it and be that character. I, I I think I think that Queen as you know Queen with whatever whatever, like that will end when when they pass. Right, but if but I, I think ex singer performing Queen, yeah, and nothing nothing but Queen, almost like a tribute. That I can see. Or if they do the hologram thing. It'll be a hologram of, of, of Freddie Mercury with a backing band. They already do that for the start of for the the start of um, 
for most, more than probably half of Bohemian Rhapsody. But they 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 just play a video of Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody. So I mean, it's also you know, Laser Light Show. It's featuring Pink Floyd. It's almost that's, the same. I mean, that's, that's tapes that, and stuff like that. But that's cheeky and fun. But so. the thing is, that's the kind of thing we're talking about, though. Yeah. You know, again, the the Dio hologram is a hologram of the man f- featuring former members of some of his backing bands. Yeah. You know, all those musicians essentially are replaceable. Mm-hmm. The hologram of Dio is not. Mm-hmm. You know, that's th- that's kind of the, the 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 way I see things happening, especially with the, the bigger multi-million dollar drawing artists mm-hmm. you know like Kiss Kiss is a circus you know Kiss can tour around and blow up every stadium in the history of the world but anyone can be behind that makeup gotcha anyone can be those characters mm-hmm. you know and I think it, that can happen for a number of the bigger bands that are not that are more showmen and more Entrepreneurial than, um, than just music. You know what I mean? Who would you definitely not want to see do that? Just because I'm their I'm, I'm their biggest fan. One of their biggest fans is Metallica. I don't want I, like they've they've had their their sellout um, accusations for so long that I would love for them to be the band that finally calls it quits and that's it. Didn't they? Like, I think sellout accusations started with Ride the Lightning. It did. I mean, it totally did. Once they once they wrote Fade to well, Black, it when, did. Once they signed a record label, they yeah. were they were called sellouts. Yeah, but the thing is, I mean, it's only gotten worse after the Black album, Load and Reload. Yeah. Like, you know, they're selling out. They're selling out. They're selling out. I I would want that band when they call it quits to call it quits. Yeah. I it, you know the music will live on forever, you know all that good stuff, but. I want it to end, and I want it to end on a good note. I don't want it to drag on like the Who, where like the last time you saw Roger, Roger Daltrey, it was like, dude, please, give it up. You know, I don't want them to drag it out like Ozzy Osbourne, where again every show is a crapshoot, whether you're gonna get a good one or a bad one. You know, Wait, I don't, I don't want them to reach that point. You, you, we're talking about like like. Once they once they reach a certain point, they know to sit there and say stop. We, yeah, we've had enough. Because because, I, because Iron Maiden will do that for sure. Iron Maiden's already talking about it. Yeah, they, they've been talking about it for years, and like and technically and since they're still putting on good shows, I mean, I would I would hate to say it, but you know if they if they decided to call it quits at the end of this tour, all it's, good. It's called Legacy of the Beast. Bam. Done. You, you said you guys just came out and said we're done. We're done. That's fine. I I can I can live with that. Totally condone that. Yeah, but but it's just you know the the way it feels like <laughs> it feels like all these merchandise things for Kiss are Horcruxes like in Harry Potter. It's just a way of Gene Simmons living forever. <laughs> he's the evil Lord Voldemort and he's trying to live forever. <laughs> he's got a nose though. <laughs> Does he really though? Does he really have a nose He might. <laughs> I mean, let things, like Led Zeppelin. There's not, there. I mean, Jason Bonham's out there as the Led Zeppelin experience or something like that. Yeah. But the original members of the band, Robert Plant's doing his own thing. Jimmy Page is reissuing Led Zeppelin records. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, that's not, you know, trying to reform the band with a replacement for Robert Plant. It's it's a matter of, like, it's, do we, uh, I, we, like, we understand what you want, but is it really what you need? Yeah. Like, putting... Having having Pink Floyd get back together for for shows like, do you really need that necessarily? They're both they're both doing fine on their own. Yeah. Why why do you need them to to come back together just to do whatever? Whatever. You, you don't need that. You know, just let it let it lie. Let 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 them do what they're doing. They're doing perfectly fine. And just let the legacy of the band not be tainted. Yeah. Leave it alone. Yeah. You know. Once once it expands beyond the music, there's a, a, a certain amount of taint that goes with with it. 
you know, that, because it ta- it takes a, it takes away from the original purpose. But one would could argue that with Queen having different vocalists take the place of Freddie Mercury. There, again, I think that that's 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 even more of like a tribute thing. Again, that's them trying to, to remain relevant. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, like I think they would they were could have been perfectly fine not touring. Mm-hmm. I mean, they weren't touring when at the time of Wayne's World. I mean, what when year was Wayne's World? Wayne's World was before he died, I think. Was it? I think I think it was. I think Wayne's World was ninety two. Wow. And he died in ninety two, end of ninety two. <laughs> anyway, they saw a resurgence with that. I think they could have been just fine. You know that even now, you know they are I think just fine without touring or anything like that. Mm. You know, the biopic is understandable. It's a movie. Yeah. It's a movie about them. Yeah. You, that, you, I can understand that. that, you, can expect, that. You, can, you can expect that for... But the, the, the touring aspect of it, mm. I, I think, is not necessarily required or needed. No. You know? No. You know, if, you want, if Brian May wants to make new records as Brian May yeah. with Roger Taylor and not call it Queen, mm-hmm. perfectly fine. Yeah. But to continue as Queen without your leading frontman, without your signature aspect of your band, mm-hmm. I think that's just a little too much. Mm-hmm. You know, I can understand replacing someone, i.e. ACDC, Alice in Chains, but the core members of the band are still there. <clears throat> um, and plus it happened so long ago that the band has been a band with that new singer longer than it was with the original singer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as iconic as those songs are, you know, they have even more of a catalog without that original person. Queen has virtually no catalog without Freddie Mercury. Their entire catalog is Freddie Mercury. Well, yeah, their catalog as Queen, under the banner of Queen, simply Queen, is... Freddie Mercury. I mean, everything they, else is I, Queen I think Anne. They should have done <clears throat> the album with, um, oh my God, why is his name? Paul Rogers. Mm-hmm. It should have been a different band. It should not have been Paul Rogers and Queen. It should have been a different band altogether. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that was a lot of the, I think I've seen that happen a lot of times where, you know, it's always this person and this band coming together and, there's expectations that are that are that come into a record like Lulu. Yeah. When you saw Lou Reed and Metallica, there are certain expectations, and you got none of that. It should have no. just been a Lou Reed album with Metallica. With Metallica as his backing band. Yeah. The way that Neil Young did it on Mirrorball, it was a Neil Young record with Pearl Jam as his backing band, mm-hmm. but nowhere except for the line notes that say Neil Young and Pearl Jam. Is yeah. a Neil Young record with Pearl Jam as his backing band. Yeah, I think that should have been the way it was for the Queen and Paul Rogers record. Mm-hmm. Even either do a new name, new, name a new band, or just call it uh, Paul Rogers and Paul uh, May and Taylor. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, just don't call it Queen because like, it's the, not like, Queen. Kind of like how um, when. Um... Yes, kind of had their their split. It was yes, and then, then there was the the album by Anderson, Bruford, Wake, uh, Wakeman, and Howe. Yeah, it was just the the four of them. There was they were missing one person. Yeah, I mean, th- I think th- that does more service to the legacy of the original band than continuing on as as that original band. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, the same could be said for Guns N' Roses when everyone else split except for Axel. Axel could have released a solo record and called it Chinese Democracy. Mm-hmm. Not released Guns N' Roses Chinese Democracy. Could have been Axl Rose's Chinese Democracy. It's still, and it's. I mean, I'm sure it's still. Considering all the fuss around it, it still could have sold the same way that it did. Yeah. Because of the. And I, and I think that also has to do with. There's also probably a business side of it that we don't know. Like, Iced Earth is John Schaefer's band. Yeah. He's had enough lineup changes. To probably populate a small country, one out, al- one per album. You know, and that kind of defeats what I just said. But the fact of the matter is that it is his band. He owns probably all of the rights to that. And the thing is, he was pretty much the sole songwriter on just about everything. He, you know, that's his band. Yeah. 
You know, so if he decides to change the lineup, that's his decision because yeah. it's his band. But if you're in a collaborative effort like Queen was, or even Guns N' Roses was at some point, when that collaborative effort is gone, and the songwriting is different because of that missing collaboration, mm-hmm. I think it needs to change. Yeah, I, that's my personal opinion. Take that and apply it to Iron Maiden. Steve Harris is Iron Maiden. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is the driving. Could, force could you of that could band. you ever see him replace everybody else? Sure. I mean, he virtually has at some in various points throughout the Iron Man career, has he not? Except he's, for Dave Murray. Except for Dave Murray, but he's had. I mean, Adrian Smith left the, left the band. They got Yannick Gers. Adrian mm-hmm. Smith came back. They decided to keep Yannick. Yeah. Why not? Mm-hmm. You know, and and the, they ha- they had um, Clive Burr originally, mm-hmm. and he left um, after no- Number of the Beast. Um, also, before Adrian Smith came in, there was Dennis Stratton. Um, We've got Paul Diano, Paul Diano. Bruce Dickinson, yeah. Blaze Bailey, back to Dickinson. But I'm, I'm talking about at this point. At this at this point, at this point, if he was to try and replace anybody, I think he would even know to that at this point. There is no point. Yeah, uh, they've done what they needed yeah. to do. Mm-hmm. You know, to try and to force a a new member down their throats, unless it's like if Yannick left the band, they'd be like, "All right, we can continue as a five piece. Mm-hmm. We're okay." If Adrian left the band, you know what? We've dealt with this before. We're okay. But if Bruce Dickinson decided to leave the band again, there's no way. They've they've. There's no way. Yeah, the, 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 at, at this point, I mean, because I'm, I'm also using the compare, I'm also using uh, Drew's preset example here. J.K. J, J. Downing or K.K. Downing, K.K. Downing. K. K. Downing left the band after so many years, mm-hmm. and they continued. But if Rob Halford were to leave the band again, I don't think they would continue. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'd be giving Ripper a call back. Ripper probably won't even answer <laughs> at this point. You know, I, I think those bands have reached a point where if the signature sound is gone, mm-hmm. and we know that the vocals at this point for these bands are the signature sounds. That it would just come to an end. Gotcha. You know, I think when the original vocal changes happened, they were still early enough in their career where they can bounce back, a la ACDC, Alice in Chains, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. But they are at a point now where, what's the point? Yeah, I got you. I think we'll end it there. Sounds good to me. Okay. So um, that was was clip filled, and then we had a nice discussion. And okay. we didn't plan on that. So this was an actually really good episode. So so, so yeah, episode one hundred. Um, here's to a hundred more, which you know maybe uh, not take as many as three years, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> well, actually, it would be every every other week could be two years. So we'll see. We'll see. Whatever. 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 We'll Until there. next time, I'm Dan Mack. And this is Chris Mack. And the damn thing turned off right when I did. <laughs> okay, here we go. The damn thing. Name of the episode. Like I said at the end of the last episode, mistakes in 2019 are still going to be a thing. <laughs> Might as well jump. <laughs> <And> fuck you. <laughs>